Hey, welcome to Bethel Online. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you're watching us today, it's by no accident. We believe that God has something just for you. Here at Bethel, we believe that when real people, people like you and me, encounter the real Jesus, real change happens. So our hope and prayer for you is that you have an encounter with Jesus today. We also believe that God has a next step for all of us to take. Today, your step may just be watching this week's message. It could be asking God to forgive you and finally putting your hope and trust and faith in Jesus for the first time. Maybe it's being baptized or beginning to read through the Bible, whatever it is. We want to help you take that next step. You can let us know what step you're taking by texting the word online to 765-433-2004. We would love to walk with you. During this season, God is teaching us to be flexible. It seems like every week there's a new challenge and more and more changes. A great way to stay up to date on all the changes that's happening at Bethel is to follow us on social media. It's also a great way to listen to current and past Sunday morning messages. Like us on Facebook, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and follow us on Instagram. You can find us on all these platforms by searching Bethel Putco. Well, thanks again for tuning in online today. We know, we want you to know that you are wanted you are welcomed here, and that you are loved. I hope you have a great day. God bless. Good morning, Bethel. So glad you joined us today for this Sunday online worship. Hey, my name's Jason. I'm one of the pastors here. I'm actually a Connections pastor here. And this week I'm going to be sharing the word with you. And we're going to kind of talk about hospitality and its role. Uh, role in the church, role out in public. Uh, so first thing is I kind, of want to, I kind of want to take and paint you a picture. And we'll give you a couple different variances. Let's remember the first time that you went to church. You were invited to church. You either went to get someone off your back or you had a legit, I want to go check out this, this church. And I'm also going to give you this, this other scenario of moving into a neighborhood for the first time. So you kind of get to understand. I want you to experience and remember some of the anxiety that came with being the new person, the new guest. Uh, be it in church, you know, you pull up to this church, you're in the parking lot, you see people walking in talking to each other and you're the odd man out. And so you just want to get in there. And is, is that the right doorway to go in? Is, this, is, is you sure this is where we're supposed to be? And so we get in there and then you look and you have huddles of people that are, that are talking and laughing and you don't know anybody. You just want to go find a seat. And so you go find your seat. Same thing about when you're moving into a new neighborhood. You're the odd man out. You know, these people are there 15, 20 years. You show up like a guy like me who's 6'5", full of tattoos and bald and a beard. You're going to want to hide your children or hide your wife's purses. But you don't know who I am. And so there's that, there's that nervousness. Of, oh, geez, what have I got myself into? So today we're going to really talk about hospitality. And we're going to talk about specifically being hospitable in a time of hostility. Listen, in the last two years... What we have really seen prominently in our culture is an increased hatred and anger, division, and an us versus them mentality. The saddest reality of this is that that has crept into the church. Psychologists suggest that as soon as we draw a line, boundaries between us and them, what happens is we stop giving compassion. We stop having empathy or respect for others who don't look like us, think like us, and smell like us. That's a problem. As Christ followers, this goes against everything that God has taught us through the Holy Spirit and has given each one of us, and that's grace and mercy. We have got to stop letting culture dictate our hearts and thinking because we as Christians... Followers of Christ, we have been called to a greater love than our culture. 
In 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 8, it describes what a Christian Christ-like love is and how it should be portrayed to others. And we'll start out with uh, love is patient. I've underlined some of these key words because it's really important to focus in and remember these things. Love is kind. It doesn't envy. It doesn't boast. It's not proud. It doesn't dishonor others. It's not self-seeking. What can I get out of this? It's not easily angered. <laughs> it's not easily angered. We have got to quit being so easily offended. It keeps no records of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, it always trusts, always hopes, always perseveres. Love never fails. When you divide people into groups as us and them, we start to dehumanize one another. We start to demonize people, in fact, and look at them like they are not also made in the image of God. Scripture teaches this unwavering truth that we as Christ followers often forget there is no us or them. It, that's not it. Ephesians tells us who our struggle is with. Ephesians 6, 12 says, For we are not struggling against human beings, but against rulers, authorities, cosmic powers governing this darkness, against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realm. If y'all remember, Satan was kicked out of heaven and thrown to earth. So he, this is kind of his realm. That's what the Bible tells us. Listen, we're aliens in this land. We're just passing through. This is not our home. This is why. And in case some of you are not familiar with the rulers, authorities, cosmic powers, I'm going to help you out. It's this guy. Now, when you look at him, you don't necessarily see this monstrous creature, although the wings are a little ominous. But if you break it down and look at it, he's got the Fabio hair. He's got the trimmed beard, got a muscle tee, nice suit. He's put together. If you notice how calm and cool and relaxed he looks like, Satan does not always come to you as a monster. He comes to you cool, collected, even convincing. 2 Corinthians, if the good news we preach is hidden behind a veil, it's hidden only from people who are perishing. Satan, we just talked about him, who is the God of this world, has blinded the minds of those that don't believe. They're unable to see the glorious light of the good news. They don't understand this message about the glory of Christ, who is the exact likeness of God. So when we offer hospitality to folks, we are loving, long-suffering, doing all the things that we're supposed to do that, God has taught, that Christ has taught us, and we don't get that back, oftentimes we're really quick to get angry to say, you know, whatever, I tried and they wouldn't listen. The second Corinthians is talking about why they don't listen, okay? They're blinded. They're blinded by Satan. He's not allowing them to notice that. But we keep on giving them what they deserve, and that's love, grace, and mercy. And why? Because it's the work of the Holy Spirit. That's what changes the heart, takes away that veil. I chose this picture because, man, that's, that's just a powerful for photo right there of the Holy Spirit taking down and burning away all the things that are keeping this man from seeing the true uh, jest of, of Jesus and of God. And so remember, not your job. Your job is to be long-suffering, kind, humble. That's what our job is. His job is to do the work that we cannot do. So you're probably wondering, what is the meaning of hospitality? What's the first thing you think of? Me, hotels. A hospitable hotel, a nice restaurant, they count on being hospitable to keep business and to, and to earn business. But in the New Testament, the Greek word translated hospitality literally means love of strangers. Now I know that is already freaking some of you guys out, but that's okay. The love of strangers. Uh, to become hospitable means finding a way to welcome in the marginalized, the forgotten, and the misunderstood among us. So one of the first stories that we see of hospitality is in the Old Testament, is in Genesis. And that is Genesis 18, 1 through 8. I'm going to set this up just a little bit. 
So back in the day, there was very, uh, during this time, of, in the time of the Bible, um, during these stories and where Abraham lived, um, very nomadic. So you, you traveled in, in over wide areas of places. Um, you know, you never knew who was going to be a friend or a foe. You never knew who was coming over that, that hill, if they were going to be friendly or they're going to try to uh, steal all of your things. So this is some of the things that they used, and that was hospitality, not knowing who they were dealing with. They were trying to make um, uh, people that could be possibly enemies, friends. Their goal was to make them friends first. So the Lord appeared again to Abram near the oak grove belonging to Mamre. One day, Abraham was sitting at the entrance to his tent. During the hottest part of the day, he looked up and noticed three men standing nearby. When he saw them, he ran to meet them and welcomed them, bowing low to the ground. My Lord, he said, if it pleases you, stop here for a while. Rest in the shade of this tree while water is brought to wash your feet. And since you've honored your servant with this visit, let me prepare some food to refresh you before you continue on your journey. All right, they said, do as you have said. So Abraham ran back to the tent and said to Sarah, hurry, get three large measures of your best flour. Knead it into dough. You notice that? They're your best flour. He didn't go to the cabinet and say, hey, bypass the Dr. Pepper and bring out the Dr. Thunder. It just wasn't what he did. He made sure they had the best. And this was in the heat of the day, remember? And all of a sudden, I mean, I don't know about y'all, the last thing I want to do is throw a, a, an impromptu barbecue if it's, you know, 110 degrees out and get a whole family involved in it. But that's what he did. Then Abraham ran out to the herd, chose a tender calf, and gave it to his servant, who quickly prepared it. When the food was ready, Abraham took some yogurt and milk and the roasted meat, and he served it to the men as they ate. Abraham waited on them in the shade of the trees. In Hebrews 13:2. It says, do not forget to show hospitality to strangers. By, by doing so, some people have shown hospitality to angels without knowing. So that last little encounter that he had, we know that that was the Lord, but he did not know that that was the Lord and two angels. He said he saw three men standing there. So this is where that scripture comes into pass. You never know who you're going to be hospitable to. So then we go into the New Testament. In the New Testament, we witness the introduction of Jesus and the indifference of people by the Holy Spirit. Luke 15, 1 and 2 says, Now the tax collectors and sinners were all drawing near to him, Jesus, and the Pharisees and scribes grumbled, saying, This man receives sinners and eats with them. Disgusting. But I want to show you that this picture here in Luke is the perfect picture of the Pharisees doing the us and them, and it just doesn't work out. So number two is we must practice hospitality. Why? Because we have received it. We have received God's grace, his love, his mercy, and so we have to extend that to others. This is the gift of hospitality. Jesus showed us hospitality when we were yet sinning and far from him. Romans 3.23 says, All have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. The Apostle Paul is reminding us of our pasts and the joy that we should have to see others come to know the saving grace of Jesus. He's really trying to point out that, listen, although you are now a different person than you were, you were once what they would consider one of them. And I don't know about you, but I wouldn't have one been labeled as them I am who I am. Ephesians 2, 1 and 2 says, Once you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins, you used to live in sin, just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander of the powers in the unseen world. He is the spirit at work in the hearts of those who refuse to obey God. Matthew 22, they asked Jesus, what's, what's the greatest commandment? Jesus replied, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. And the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. And you might think, well, who's my neighbor? Is my neighbor the guy next door? 
The neighbor is whoever God brings to you. You look at the story of the Good Samaritan. That man that helped him that day saw him as his neighbor. And they were completely different people from different cultures, different areas, but he was shown hospitality. This picture, I love this picture. One of the reasons I, I shared it was our calling as Christians, as Christ followers, is to change the identity of strangers into friends, then from friends into family. Our goal as Christ followers is to expand the borders of the kingdom of God. Remember, Abraham ran to the strangers. Some folks are so desperate right now for Jesus, for the love and the acceptance. And some people just don't know they need him yet. So it's our job to run. When we see someone reaching out, that we grab their hands. We bring other people along with us. Why? We're expanding that kingdom. We're growing our family. Philippians 2, 1 through 2 says, and this is Paul teaching again. He says, therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being of one spirit and of one mind. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit. Rather, in humility, value others above yourself, not looking to your own interest, but to each of you the interest of others. Man, that is not what we hear today. It's look out for numero uno one. You know, it's watch out for yourself and you above everybody else. Scripture clearly tells us that's not how it's supposed to happen. Now, this is for the Christians. These are for the Christ followers, okay? You have to be humble and you have to always put others above yourself because Jesus being the son of God, being God himself, lowered himself, humbled himself to walk the earth like us and experience the things that we experienced. Once again, Paul is teaching the way of Jesus and always putting others before yourself. He's saying, if you have experienced any of these blessings because of Christ, it's our duty as followers of Jesus to show the same to everybody else that we encounter. Jesus knows, just know that every encounter that you experience is a God ordained encounter. I don't believe in luck. I, don't, I just, it, it's not a thing. If, if I run into somebody, it's, there's gotta be a reason and I don't know why. It may be an encouraging word. It may just be a smile, a hey. But remember every person that you run into, it's a meeting designed by God and you need to be really sensitive to the Holy Spirit and what, what you're supposed to be doing at that point. So, number three, how do we be hospitable? First Peter says, offering hospitality to one another without grumbling. So what's that mean? We don't want to be grumpy guesses. We want to do it out of a heart of actual love and servitude. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others. As faithful stewards of God's grace, in his various forms. People who are hospitable don't set out looking to be hospitable. They just give it a try when there's a chance to. It reminds me, a good example, many of you remember uh, Pastor Nick and his wife, Allison. Um, we had a, a staff dinner one night, and man, we showed up. The place was, was neat. They opened the door before we got there. Come in, I'm so glad you guys could make it. And then we got in and Man, I mean, everything was labeled with these little, um, little chalkboard things, of what we were eating, and it was, it was amazing. I mean, she was so hospitable in having us, we automatically felt at ease. You know, we, it was just a good experience all the way around. Now, I don't know if, it, I believe that's probably something she's just good at. Um, but maybe not, maybe it's something she had to work at. Either way, we felt welcomed and we felt loved there. Um, it's not about results, okay? Being hospital is not about results. It's about obeying a prompting of the Holy Spirit and just being there for that person in that moment of time. So my question for you is, do you have the space and the time to create a safe place of belonging? People are desperately, desperately seeking family. And what better family than the kingdom of God? Me and my wife were part of motorcycle ministry for about seven years. 
We traveled to all different kinds of rallies. We've met all different kinds of people. And if it was from what would be considered the low of the low, the homeless people, to the people who had six-figure incomes, there's two things that we noticed over those years. Everybody wants to be wanted and they want to be loved. And we have that ability to bring people into that family. We're bring, bringing strangers to friends, friends to family. So God is going to call you out of your comfort zone. This little guy peeking out is cracking me up because, yeah, he's talking to you. You know, I hear so many Christians would say, you know, if God called me to a foreign country to minister, I would, I would obey and I would go. But would you go three rows up and talk to that person that you've never talked to before? That's the question. Christ followers. This is not for people who do not know Jesus and, and are following Christ. If you're still trying to figure Jesus out, if you're, you know, if you're just here to check things out, that's fine. This is not to you. This is for those who claim to be followers of Christ. It is not just the hospitality team's job to welcome our guests. The new face that you have never seen before, the person you've never spoke to, and you've been coming here for a while, it's your job, your family, and family reaches out. And they, well, they're supposed to run to. And I wouldn't suggest run to people. You might really scare some people, especially if I was doing it. But, but take the steps. Step out of your comfort zone. Introduce yourself. I don't know that I've met you before. My name is so-and-so. It's really non-evasive, but it can make the world a difference in putting somebody at ease so that we can take the stranger into a friend, into family. It's everyone's job. It's the church's job inside the building, outside the building. So what are some easy first steps? <laughs> I'm so glad you asked. I actually have some. All right, this is, this is a good list. Number one, bring cookies to a neighbor. We have some friends that do a doorbell dash. Ding dong, by the time I get up and get to the door, they're gone. And there's a box of cookies there that says, hey, you're low, we were thinking about you. That's a simple thing to do, but man, it speaks volumes. If you have a new neighbor that's coming to town, you know, do that. If it's somebody that you have just met, stop by their house, drop them off and make good. It's simple, simple things to be hospitable. Number two, stop and help someone at the store or gas station. You're like, well, what do you mean pump their gas? Not necessarily, but listen, if there's a crowd coming at you, open the door. Let all of them go in before you go in. Say hello, nice day. At the store, if you see someone struggling to reach something high and you're able to do it, do it. Strike a conversation. Now, number three, <laughs> number three may step on some toes. And it, it is not meant to, but I just, need, I just need you to see this. Listen to those who you do not understand. Most of the time when we put those lines, we don't understand the person. Why do you do that? Why do you look this way? Why do you act that way? Listen to those you don't understand. Shh. Just listen. And remember, you don't always need to share your opinion because we all have one, obviously. But that opinion, I've got friends who have different opinions than I do, and there's nothing I wouldn't do with them and vice versa. It's okay to have a different opinion. Number four, invite your neighbors over for a kick out. Smoke some meat, throw some burgers on a grill. If you're at church and you met a new couple, Hey, would you guys be interested in going out for lunch after church? You know, $25, $30, you're making a huge impact, and you're taking people that you don't know, turning them into friends, and will hopefully turn them into family. But I do want to warn you. Remember this guy? Yeah, he'll be there. Above all, do not be afraid, because he will whisper some crazy crap into your ear that is not true. Now listen. I have been to a lot of events. I've been to a lot of places where I didn't know anybody. I've never seen anybody shot, knifed, or threatened by handing them a cheeseburger. I've just never seen it. Um, no one has ever opened the door, looked down at those cookies, and said, who would bring me cookies? What are they thinking? It's not a reality, but Satan will tell you that, well, maybe they're diabetic. Maybe they don't, they don't eat cookies. Well, maybe they are diabetic, but maybe their kids aren't. Quit listening to him. Follow the prompting of the Holy Spirit. Hospitality is not what we do. It's who we are to be. 
God has called each one of us to be the person who runs to the stranger, the marginalized, the forgotten, and the misunderstood, and bring him into the family of God. Take everything you've learned today and apply it. So this week's action plan, talk to at least one person that you don't know, or someone you've never talked to before, or whoever the person God brings to you. You don't have to tell even talk to them about God, Jesus, or church. Listen, we don't need more projects. And nobody wants to be yours. The Holy Spirit's job is to do that work. We are to get to know them, for them to get to know us. At some point, God will open a door or he'll open an avenue and cause them to be receptive and ask questions. And then we have that relationship built and now we can talk to them and it's not weird. You may never be given a platform to preach from or a podcast where hundreds of people listen to you. But everyone in here has the ability and the means to be hospitable. If each one of us will take seriously the call to be hospitable, we would really understand the true meaning of what ministry is and be excited to run to whoever God puts in our path. So at the end of the day, we are going to be learned to, be, uh, to share hospitality despite being in a time of hostility. Beth, I, I appreciate you so much. I hope this message lands home. I hope that um, it is something that, that can uh, break your heart and drive yourself to those strangers who you don't know. Listen, I know most of you guys. You're good folks. You're, you're fun to be around. People would, people need to know who you are. And so with that, Bethel, I love you. Have a great week. As Pastor Aaron says, know that you're loved. Hey, thanks so much for watching. Are you ready to take your next step? We would love to hear from you. You can send an email to hello at Bethel.us. You can send us a message on Facebook, or you can let us know in the Bethel app. And speaking of the Bethel app, Take a moment, if you haven't already, to go to your app store and search Bethel Putco to download our app. There's all kinds of great resources in the app. You can listen to messages, you can view the messages from Sunday morning, and you can also fill out a digital connect card. You can do that today and each week to let us know that you're tuning in. You can also find some great information about our Bethel Kids Ministry and our Be The One Student Ministries. Also in the app, you can give. It's one of three ways you can give with online giving at Bethel.us slash give in our app, Bethel Putco, or through text. Hey, thanks again for joining us. We hope you have a great day and know that you are loved.